Hello there, my name is Chris Garrick. I'm the Director of Stewardship at the Grand Traverse Regional Land Conservancy. Today we are at Mitchell Creek Meadows, the Don and Jerry Olson Nature Preserve. Today we're gonna to talk a bit about invasive species, namely what they are, why we manage them, how we manage them, and how you can get involved. An invasive species is defined as a species that is non-native, so for us that means non-native to North America, uh, has potential to cause economic, human health, or environmental harm. And that definition is really important because there are a number of species that people will often refer to as invasive, where in reality they're just quite aggressive. Some good examples of this are our native scouring rush and bracken fern, which can quickly colonize an area, but since they don't meet that definition of being a non-native species or causing any of those harms we talked about, they are not identified as invasive species. Another important aspect of that definition is that not all non-native plants become invasive. In fact, a very small percentage of plants that are introduced in North America actually become invasive. And despite only a small percentage of those species actually becoming invasive, they can have some pretty significant repercussions. Most of the species we manage on our properties have originated in either Europe or Asia. And as you can imagine, humans have done a pretty remarkable job of moving these species across the globe. And many of the species that we are contending with today have arrived through shipping and other trade. Another way that humans contribute to the invasive species issue is through our landscaping and gardening practices. Many of the species that we manage actually originated from those locations. For example, things like garlic mustard and wild parsnip escape from our gardens, and things like Japanese barberry escape from our landscape. And while we really admire these plants for their beauty in our landscape, when they escape from those areas, they can wreak havoc on our natural ecosystems and provide little, if any, ecological value. That's why it's really important that we're making good decisions in our gardens and landscapes. And once these species become established, they can be further spread through routine recreational activities like hiking and biking, where seeds can become attached in your tread or clothing. And wildlife can also exacerbate the spread by moving seed uh, quite a distance off-site. A few of the species we most commonly deal with are garlic mustard, which is typically found in our forested landscapes, baby's breath, very common on our dune ecosystems, autumn olive, which loves to colonize old field habitats like here at Mitchell Creek Meadows, and phragmites, which is common along our lakeshores. One of the reasons invasive species are so impactful to our native ecosystems is that because they possess a number of life history traits that give them significant competitive advantage over our native plants. And that includes a lot of things, uh, but some simple examples are earlier leaf out times, higher reproductive rates, no natural predators, and chemicals that allow these plants to change the growing conditions so that they are favorable for them and less so for native plants. All of these factors will not only lead to the physical displacement of native plants on a landscape, as you can see slowly happening here at Mitchell Creek Meadows, where we have autumn olive encroaching on this field of red osier dogwood, and left unmanaged, the autumn olive would colonize this area. But the loss of native plants on the landscape also has profound impacts for the broader food web. In many cases, our native plants and insects have evolved together over time and have created really strong symbiotic relationships where one insect may require a very specific plant. These insects cannot simply move from a native plant to a non-native one. And once that plant is lost from the landscape, so too is that insect, which has further implications, as I said, up the food web of limiting food resources for birds and other animals. And in a an heavily infested area where you end up with a monoculture of invasive species, you've displaced all the native vegetation that insects and other species would rely on. And in some cases, our native plants can host hundreds of insect species, whereas invasive species often host very few. Because invasive species are so impactful to our native ecosystems, we want to manage them on our properties and there are a number of techniques and strategies that we use to do so. The first and most important is actually prevention. It's a lot easier to manage an infestation that never happens. So we try to, as much as possible, work with partners and stay up on the latest research so that we can help people make good decisions about how they interact with our nature preserves. Secondly, 
We employ early detection and surveys on our properties so that we can identify populations of invasive species and treat them before they get out of control. When populations of invasive species do become established, there are a number of techniques we use to treat those populations. The first one is mechanical, which is often very simply hand pulling a species, or if it's a woody species like autumn olive here, we will cut those down. And a great thing about that is you can create piles, uh, creating additional habitat. Additionally, we have a couple of goat herds that we use to help us manage woody invasives on our properties. And they're a really great natural solution to managing these species on our properties. And with our new greenhouse facility, we're really excited about the opportunity to start working in native plants in our invasive species management. So not only will we be removing invasives, but we'll be putting natives back in their place. Managing invasive species is a big job that's very critical and requires commitment from land managers. Invasive species don't pay attention to jurisdictional boundaries, which means that it often requires multi-partner regional efforts to tackle these issues. A great example of this is the work that we've done with the Michigan Dune Alliance to treat baby's breath along the Lake Michigan coastline, which has resulted in us having a maintenance level of baby's breath at our preserves. Invasive species are a major threat to the health of our region, but with increased awareness and proper management, we can limit the impact and in some cases even eliminate it. We're all partners in caring for the health of this region, and we appreciate the growing awareness and willingness of you to help out. If you'd like to learn more about invasive species management, check out the resources at the end of this video. If you're interested in joining us for an invasive species workday, please visit gtrlc.org.